Well, good evening, everybody out there in Chester County, Coatesville, and on my Facebook page. This is the moment I've been waiting for. I don't know if y'all been waiting for it, but I've been waiting for it. And sometimes that's all that matters, as if I'm waiting for it. Now, you know I like my theme song. I'm going to shut up just for a second. Look, man, look. I got none other than... A brother from another mother, Mr. Benny Sims. Oh, look, look, look. We can really have a good time tonight. Hey, you got a couple of minutes, though, right, Benny? We can share oh, some time together. Oh, yeah, absolutely. All right. All right. All my viewers, I'm going to just take my time because you know I get hyped, right? Because when I, get excited, <laughs> I get excited. And look, it, it ain't a bad thing because sometimes we be around other people. We all cool. We're not impressed with some of the stuff that they do and who they are. Well, I'm doggone impressed. And we're going to get into this. But my viewers, I need y'all to go to your little iPads and your phones and stuff like that and hit the share button. Yesterday, I couldn't get my own interview on so I could meet and greet people. And that is so important when I do what I do. So, all right. So, everybody, y'all know what the deal is. Now, I'm going to see if I can make it happen on mine. I got a couple of things working here. Shuck. You know, I want to show off tonight. I got Mr. Benny Sims here. Oh, 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 I'm connected. We got some people on here already. Oh, <laughs> praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jay Bird <laughs> Dillard, Bob Horsey, and Barbara Marshall. Sister Barbara Marshall, it is so good to see you this evening. I should have hit you up personally, but you are so true to the game and faithful to this event that I'm so glad that you tuned in. You know who we got up here. Well, so far as new life on here, so y'all know who's, who's up here. We got Mr. Benny Sims. I'm not going to do a lot of running my mouth and stuff like that because we got some stuff we got to talk about and everything. So Donna Rowland, good evening, Sister Edith Ben. She's my diggitous. I look, I love me some of her. Since Sister Ben been on Facebook, she's on here all the time. Bless your soul. Bless your soul. Hey, tell Elijah Ben I asked about him. Let me see who else we got out here in Chester County and on my Facebook page. <laughs> Ooh. Man, this is man, God is so good. He gave me a platform where I could actually be myself and still do have some impact. Because the people that he's put he's put on this show, they have been insightful and just it's it's just amazing. Now look, today's guest, for those of you who have been sleeping under a rock and haven't been following my page, I got none other than Mr. Benny Sims, ladies and gentlemen. And some of y'all probably saying, Benny Sims, oh, who that? Oh, why he on? I, I never seen him. Well, I'm going to tell you what. Oh, uh, Sister Barbara says she miss you, Benny. Oh, I miss her too. I miss hey, everybody. Hey sister, hey, sister Barbara, we miss them. We miss the world's most dangerous band. We, we need them back. We need them back. But look, but wait a minute. Sister Barbara, Donna, y'all probably didn't know this about Benny. Because I, me, myself... You know, we give some shout outs when we see each other because he's about his business. He's doing it, ministry work, all the music and all that stuff. So we give occasional shout outs every once in a while. I see him on Facebook laying people out and putting them in their place, which makes me like him a lot. <laughs> but I don't, I didn't know the backstory. So ladies and gentlemen who are viewing in, uh, here's the story, Sister Roberta. It is so good to see you this evening. So look, y'all might know the back, the, y'all might not know the backstory. So let me tell you a little bit about Benny. <laughs> and uh, Benny Sims is a renowned bassist, singer, band leader, and composer. Benny started out with a line of successful local bands, gaining experience to build his musical career. He has written over 300 songs, raising, ranging from jazz to funk, hip hop to rock and roll and beautiful ballads. His skills have taken him to 14 different countries. I haven't been in 14 different cities, <laughs> 14 different countries. All right, now come on now. And he has performed with many well-known artists, including, get ready for you, get ready for this hit line right here. Al Jarreau, Angela Bofield, Aretha Franklin, yeah, that's right, the Queen of Soul. Lou Rawls, you'll never find. Lou Rawls, ladies and gentlemen, somebody stop me. The Spinners, The Temptations, Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes, The Tramps. We're talking about the original Harold Melvin, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Tramps, Dizzy Gillespie. Now, this is where you started getting me. Toots, 
Thielman, Rick Derringer, Rita Coolidge, Frank McCombs, B.B. Winning, Tower of Power, you're still a young man, <laughs> baby. All right, don't get me started. Pieces of a dream, y'all. Come on now. We're talking about pieces of a dream. Ray Parker Jr., Tavares. Now, he tell me he ain't old school. Tavares, <laughs> uh, the, we already said the tramps, and the three degrees. These are the people that he has performed with alongside and all that stuff. This young man ain't chopped liver. Don't let the smooth taste fool you. See, you never can tell. Don't judge this book by its cover, you know, because you would never know it. And uh, let me say, that. let me go off the grid a little bit. I've never seen a black man that played an upright bass in my life. Benny brought this, I don't know if they could, well, we're gonna find out if it's called a cello, upright bass or whatever. Upright bass. I got a question about that. But I've never seen, i never seen a brother play that thing, man. He really know how to play it. He know how to play that like he played the bass, the regular bass. But oh man, look, Benny, I want you to open up, just say hello to the viewers and everything. And if you want to share anything, anything about your family, anything, you can go ahead at it. And then we're going to get into our Q and A. Oh yeah, man. I know. Hey everybody. I miss everybody at New Life. Uh, everybody, including Pastor Dan and his wife. And and Fonzie, you know I miss you, man. And so, stupid, ain't it? Oh man, <laughs> man! Hey, hey, look, look, and and Benny, Benny plays with the church band, and I'm so blessed that he plays with two of my cousins, Jeremy and Jay, and we're gonna find out the origin of all that, all that, and all that. But my first thing I want to ask, if we can just dive right in, is where are you originally from? I'm a. I was born in Pottsville. <laughs> Pottsville, yeah, that's right. Okay. Then, and then when I was 11 years old, I moved to Pottstown. Oh, you like them pots, did you? Yeah, my mom must have liked them pots. I guess. <laughs> pots, pots down. Oh. You know? sure. And then I was, uh, by the time I was 18, I moved to Reading. I've been in Reading ever since. Get out of here. That's all right. Now, let me ask you a question. All right. So Benny Sims is in school. What, 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 what school did you graduate from? Pottstown High School. Boy, why didn't I know that? Uh, Pottstown High School. Okay. Now, when you was in high school, what did you dream uh, to be or what did you want to do in your life? I wanted to be a bass player. Did you? Yeah. So you knew from the door. All right. So let's, no, let's no, no, I, I, I knew I wanted to be a bass player by the time I was in high school. But I knew ever since I was three and a half, four years old, I was a musician. So, so, so how, did, how did you know for people out here who are trying to figure out what they want to do in their life, how did you know it? Was it a feeling or you seen yeah. somebody? What it was, I'll tell you, all I remember is the first time that I, I can, you know, remember hearing music, it was, it was great and it, was, it moved me, but I want to know how they did that. <laughs> 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 hey. so, I think one of the first people that I really saw that really swayed me was uh, Ramsey Lewis on television. Wow. Playing, playing the in crowd on television. My mom put me, had me watching TV with her and said, oh, here's Ramsey Lewis. You're going to, you like music. You're going to like this. And after I saw Ramsey Lewis, I wanted to play piano all my life. Mm. You know. well, can you play the piano? Yes. <laughs> Man, that was one of my questions too. I was like, I know you probably going to have to do other stuff too. <laughs> So are you married? You have children? You don't want to talk about it? What's going no, on? No, 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 no. I have a son. I have Dorian Sims is my son. The only son I have, only child I have. Mm. And Lord, um, you're lucky. Yeah, I'm, you know, you know and, uh, and I'm, I'm not married, but mm. I have a, a very stable relationship. Okay, cool. Because we don't want you to get in trouble on City Town Talk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> They'll talk. But wait a minute. I, just, I think I just seen Debbie Herman on here. I don't know why my this just did this. But Debbie Herman, I see you and top of the evening. I'm so happy that you tuning in. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. All right. So you knew at the age of three that you wanted to play the bass, man. That's like crazy. I, I wanted to play piano. Oh, you wanted to play the piano? Yeah. And that was always what I wanted to do. I always wanted to be a piano player. The funny thing was, well, you know, we didn't, my mom didn't have no money, we didn't have no money. And, um, and so there was no way she could afford piano, piano and piano lessons and nothing like that. She, we had, you know, I had five siblings. So 
the money was funny. And then um, finally, when we moved to Pottstown, my mom had taken a job. She, she uh, went back to work for the government. Mm -hmm. she, she had done out of high school. She lived in DC for a number of years before she came back uh, to Pottsville and had children and got married. And uh, so she, when we moved to Pottstown then, um, you know, we, I wanted to, I still wanted to play piano, but then I started wanting to play drums. <laughs> so I was one of those kids that took the 10 potato chip cans and put them all around me and, 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 and beat them with every, any kind of sticks I could put together that looked like drumsticks. And I would do that. And, uh, and the funny thing about that and piano, cause um, even in, uh, in sixth grade, um, I met a friend that, had just moved to Pottstown also, but he played piano. And so uh, we used to have our class meetings at the end of the week uh, in sixth grade, and we would occasionally play a, a duet together. He would teach me with one finger, mm -hmm. you know, how to play like bass lines, mm -hmm. usually with bass lines, and he would play the melody. At that mm -hmm. time, I didn't realize he was teaching me bass lines. I thought it was just part of the song, really. So, um, so, but what I did come to find out through it all, to make a long story short, is that uh, I was never naturally talented at piano or drums. And I was upset because I never wanted to play the bass. I never even thought of it. Until one day, my brother had this cheap $30 guitar that would cut your fingers off the strings of so sharp or whatever. And I used to play bass lines on it with one finger like this. Mm -hmm. And and then one of my friends heard me doing it and he said, I'll be right back. And he ran up to one of his friends' house and brought me this friend's bass guitar and a little amp. Mm -hmm. He said, now play that. Mm -hmm. When I heard that, it was all over. Well, it was all over. I, I want to share, share a little something here. Mm -hmm. I retired from my business in the year 2013. And I looked at you playing the bass up there. And because of the, what you did, you made me go to Westchester to this music store <laughs> and buy this package deal, right? You get a bass, you get an amp, <laughs> all right. in a box, man. I don't know, a couple hundred dollars. I said, doggone, I'm going to learn how to play the bass. I brought that thing home and just holding it, it made my wrist hurt, fingers hurt, and I, and I wound up giving the guitar away, the, yeah. guitar, the bass away to this gentleman who played for his church. So I gave it to them. So I went to a good cause. I said, man, I can't beat Benny. Let me, <laughs> hey, let me start a talk show or something. But wait a minute, let's, let's take a pause for the call. And that's that's a true story. Matter of fact, I still got the amp here. One of them small little fender jumps. Oh, I know. Uh -huh. You know the deal. All right, Carolyn, home. Carolyn Jones is watching. Carolyn, hey, hey, Tommy, Carolyn. Yeah, and Jay Dillard, one of your biggest fans, he said it was fascinating when we were at choir rehearsal and he jumped right in with Ziggy and sounded notes and played. I was like, wow, yeah, he, <laughs> he actually knows music. If y'all looked on, on my page, you seen him, is that called an upright bass or a cello? Upright bass. You seen him with his upright bass in the midst of an orchestra with a real conductor. Now, I'm, <laughs> I, was, I was totally impressed. I've been pushing that. I've been pushing that picture all day, man. It's like I know somebody preach. Look, when we get back to church, I want your autograph. But anyway, <laughs> Carolyn Jones said, hey, Benny, we miss you. Carolyn. Shirley A. Williams is watching from wherever she's watching from. It's good to see y'all. Hey, look, if you got any questions or some shout outs for Benny, put it in the comment section and you know I'm going to share it. Okay, now, so you started getting into the bass. How old were you? Uh, almost 16. Almost 16. I started really late. So so when did you start getting paid and having paid gigs and stuff like that? Wow. Uh, you know what's so funny? Um, I never knew you could make money doing it. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so when I just played that because I loved it so much and I couldn't put it down. When I finally got in some bands, like I remember my first band, we used to play we should play the speakeasy, <laughs> right? And and they and they did they didn't really give us money. She would the lady that read it. She would give us like dinners and stuff like that, which was fine. You know that was great. But um, 
you know, the first time I started playing, the first public gig I earned money when was was at a a bar that was of um, you know a little seedy questionable place. Sure. But the man had had me play, and that was the first time I played in public. You know, and I think I uh, it was me and, and three other guys, four other guys I can't remember, but um, and we got fifty dollars a piece, and it was like, wow, I couldn't believe this. Like, man, did he, I'd have done this for nothing, you know. Mm. <laughs> I didn't realize it, and then um, the next band I was in, and another guy he used to get mad at me because I would leave the gig and not get paid, and he'd have to hunt me down. And back then, we had no cell phones and no. You know, right? You know, trying to hunt somebody down was hard, especially when somebody was moving as fast as I was. Mm -hmm. And um, and he would say, "How come you always walk away? You don't get your money before you leave." I never know a musician to do that. I said, "I always forget that you're paying me to do it." <laughs> and you know, so that was crazy. But but so it it took a minute, you know. And but I never really, even today, yes, I get paid, uh -huh. but I I don't do it because of money. You know, and all that traveling and all my touring and everything, I never worried about the money. You know, just as long as I pay my bills and take care of business, you know, I, I never was the one to think about getting rich or nothing like that. You know, I didn't, I didn't care about that. I have learned in life that sometimes if you do what you really love to do, mm -hmm. money follows, man. I mean, I everything I do. Everything I do, I get paid for. Now I'm gonna tell you the truth. I've been doing everything, had sneaker franchises, all kinds of stuff. Right, right. But it's because I like doing it, man. Yeah, and I God has it, blessed man. me for that. Yeah. Hey, look, Donna Rowland said she would love would, would love a small local jazz club. Well, Donna, there is a jazz club that's gonna be opening up on the 200 block of Lincoln Highway. And so maybe we can get Benny and his group. And I've heard they group, man. <laughs> they all right. All right, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, <laughs> Jay's giving me some explanation. Hey, Levi, it's good to see you this evening. Bernie, do you sing while playing? That's a question from Carolyn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He just don't do it in new life. I, I haven't done it in new life, no. <laughs> I, I don't, you know, I used to do it a lot, but, but yeah, but since I became a band leader, I hired singers. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey man, that's all right. I ain't mad at you. Yeah. Levi, it's good to see you, man. You are true to the game and I appreciate your lords, your loyalty to the show. Anthem, top of the evening, man. Right now, if you don't know, let me tell you, I have a gentleman here named Mr. Benny Sims, who has played with everybody. Every Aretha, Lou Raw, oh, just everybody. Hey Claire, how you doing? <laughs> hey, look, uh, go to my page. I even put up uh one of your songs, I think. Um I took it off your page. Uh, I can't even remember, but it's back when you talked about the pieces of a dream and all that kind of good mm -hmm. stuff. But anyway, we got Benny Sims, bass player extraordinaire. We're going to find out how and why he picked up this upright bass in just a few moments. We don't go nowhere. Now, let me see. Don't forget to share this too. Don't be selfish. Hit the share button on your phones and stuff like that. Now, let's see. Now, I'd heard you mention Ramsey Lewis, mm -hmm. the in crowd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. But anyway, who else has been one of your major influences? Oh man. Well, you know what? Somebody just just died. Um which was boy at least the top two biggest influence on me, two, three, uh was Chick Korea. Chick Korea died and uh, that was I felt like a lost family member there. Wow. And um yeah, that was that, that was all my heroes are almost gone, you know. Um, but my on bass though, my first bass hero really was uh -huh. Stanley Clark. Oh, okay. Yep, Stanley Clark and, and Larry Graham right there too. Ah. <laughs> yep. Those oh. two were my first real like, okay, I want to play like these guys, you know what I mean? And, and for uh, my younger viewers, if some of these names don't uh aren't familiar. Google them bad boys so you know what we'd be talking about sometime. Oh. There was some bad boys back then. Oh, back they were. Bam, bad too. Bad. He was like, really? All right. Yeah. Bam. So we got rid of that question. Hey, now you already gave me one funny story. Kind of funny because you didn't want to get your money. So that's kind of funny. <laughs> and uh, I, you know, 
a band that I used to sing in because I used to sing with a group. We every every show after we get paid before we can do the next show we you know we had to get high and stuff like that so we'd always pawn our equipment right and to do our next show we had to figure out how to get money to get our amps out the pawn shop well, oh, I, sang, no. I didn't really have no stuff to pawn everybody else had guitars right <laughs> oh boy anyway now I need to hear something funny on your journey in the musical field oh my God there's so much oh my God. My touring, you know, I, I was touring all over the world up until three years ago. I kind of retired from it, from tour that that aspect of my career, touring so much. But um, there's so oh my god, so many stories. Well, you know, Drew Love and I would he toured with me for about 15 years. Get out of here. Three degrees, uh. and and uh, him and I, we we have so many stories together. Uh -huh. Him and I cannot be together. <laughs> he's special he's special there ain't no yeah. doubt about that no we can't be together me and him just it, it is a laugh we don't we hurt each other laughing so much i mean it's ridiculous we used to there's so many funny things going on with us it's everything's funny you know so uh so with him man there's a ton of funny stories but what i'll tell you in particular was uh when i opened up for disney gillespie mm here in Reading, Pennsylvania. And um, my mom had never seen me play. By then mm -hmm. I was 26, 27. I was probably 27 years old, I think. And my mom had never seen me play. And, um, but she, she turned me on to Dizzy Gillespie when I was a kid. And I opened up for Diz, I did two shows with Diz and, and we tore the place up. It's sold out place in Reading, um, outdoor venue. It's a beautiful place. And between shows, uh, after the first show, I, I came off stage and uh, one of the ladies working there said, Benny, 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 there's a lady out there that claims she's your mom. <laughs> you need to, you better come out and, and, and she wants to see you. I said, what, my mom? Get out of here. Mm. So sure enough, went back there and, and she took me back and there's my mom. She said, oh, Benny, she was crying so much. I said, was she? Because mm. my mom didn't cry about nothing. That's one tough egg there. Mm. And um, so she was so proud and all this and whatever, whatever. And um, so she said, well, I, she said, I wish I could stay and see the second show. She says, but we only paid for one. And I said, I said, mom, I'm on the show. You don't have to pay for <laughs> any of them. Oh, oh. that's too said, You can stay. And the lady said, yes, yes, you, you, you sit down. You can stay right there. And um, so she stayed for the second show. And so after that, I, I, my mom became a fan. So <laughs> good, 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 yeah. good. Hey, look, sit, let's take a pause for the calls and, and recognize some people. Iris Holmes, it's good to see you. Claire Lindlow, I think I said that already. Let me hit the wave button so I won't double up. Gail Walls, it's always good to see you, Gail. I hope you and your loved one is watching us. Barbara Lowe and Marquise, it's good to see you. Now, Levi, I'm getting ready to do something for you. Uh, I'm going to hold everybody up because Levi wants to know about who you got the biggest wow from. Levi, I'm going to mention one more time who he has played with, and then I'm going to have him answer the question. Al Jarreau, Angela Bofield, Aretha Franklin, Lou Rawls, The Spinners, Temptations, Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes, The Tramps, Dizzy Gillespie, Toot Steelman, Rick Derringer, Rita Coolidge, Frank McCombs, B.B. Wine and Tower of Power, Pieces of a Dream, Ray Parker Jr., Tavares and the Three Degrees, Levi. So now, Levi would like to know, Alex, uh, who did you get the most excited performing with or alongside or that stuff? Do you had, did you have any special picks or, or what? I, I think the most the most excited I got about playing with somebody may have been Al Jarreau. What was Al Jarreau? Maybe yeah. Uh, I think I, I that was that to me was I never dreamt that I'd play with Al Jarreau. Wow. So that was that was um yeah, yeah that that to me was I think I really felt like I accomplished something once I played with Al Jarreau. <laughs> You, you did. <laughs> I can't even buy a CD. You playing with it. That's something. Okay, okay, Levi. So I'm glad you're cool. The Levi said, what? And he's gone too, though. That's what kills me. Uh, okay, Donna Roland would like to know, has COVID slowed you down? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 
COVID slowed everybody down in my business. Um, yeah. One thing, I mean, you know, you can't, I mean, there were no venues to play for almost this whole year. And um, if you did play, you were playing small things that you couldn't really earn the kind of money that, you, I, that I was used to earning for one, for, for sure. But um, it's it's been tough. It's it's really, really been tough. So the good thing happening is, is that they gave us unemployment. Now, me as a musician, one of my pet peeves all my life was whenever things were tough, I was between gigs or whatever, I could never collect no unemployment or nothing. Mm -hmm. Us musicians. Now, any other country that I would travel to, musicians could do that. Yeah. They, you know, but we couldn't in the United States of America. No, we, we couldn't collect no unemployment. They didn't consider what I did a job, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But now they call it gig workers, uh -huh. and they actually gave us unemployment. Thank God, because I don't know if they hadn't given us unemployment, uh -huh. I don't know what we'd have done. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm serious. I don't know what we would have done because, you know, you you can sit on your savings and, and and, but man, let me tell you, even on unemployment, it 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 had it'll have your bank account dwindling. Yeah, it's a struggle. It's a struggle. You know, it's a struggle. So yeah, the COVID's been uh, something that I could have never ever predicted. That's for sure. EJ, it is good to see you, EJ. I got many Sims, and he is a basis extraordinaire. Uh, unlike the Broken Home Band that I used to play with, that came from Bill, <laughs> like. <laughs> We had a band called the Broken Home Band. I like half, that. Half of us was broke, the other half ain't had no home. That's why we pawned our equipment all the time. You pray for it, pray for it. I'm so glad that I got saved and my life changed. <laughs> uh, so, uh, <laughs> all right, so now, what type of music did you play at first? And, and do you have a preference in the in the genre of music? Oh, I love all, all the music, but I have, I have preferences, but I love it all. If, as long as it's done well. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I mean, the first thing I, I played, one the, that I ever played that I felt like, oh, right, was uh, playing James Brown. I mean, <laughs> mm. I mean, if you play bass and drums and you don't play James Brown, you ain't never going to be able to play no funk. <laughs> oh, man, I heard that. I'm telling you, you had to have, you can tell the people who had grown up playing James Brown. You uh -huh. the way they play. You can tell. And, um, and, and I can hear like in, the, in a lot of the younger players, they don't have that element because they don't, a lot of them they don't even really know who James Brown is. And, um, and they miss, listen, that was the beginning of funk. Mm -hmm. that, that he invented it. It's still, a lot of his songs are still, there's no songs funkier than most of his songs today mm -hmm. ever been done. And, um, you know, and, and if that, that, Man, I mean, James Brown is 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 as basic as as if you want to be funky, you better learn how to play James Brown. That's all I. Who <laughs> heard, heard that? Mm -hmm. All right, now let me ask you a question. Now, this, this, mm -hmm. this. what made you decide to play the upright bass? Well, I always wanted to. After after I picked up the electric, I always wanted to, and especially when I tell you what happened when I started learning to play jazz and swing. Uh -huh. You know, when I learned to do that. You know, then let's see, the, you know, all the great Ray Brown and, you know, Ron Carter and them playing the upright bass, Rufus Reed. And I didn't play upright bass, but I noticed that, man, there's something about the way that sounds when it swings and the way it feels. I'm like, I always wanted to do it. So I actually, years ago, I, I got a cheap upright bass. Uh -huh. And um, but I was traveling and gigging all the time. I never had a chance to learn to play it. So I, after a couple of years, I sold it. Uh-huh. You know, but 10 years ago, I said, it's time. I want to play. I was I was at uh, I was playing with the Vancouver Symphony Orchestra. Is that uh, is that where that picture is from? No, that, that was the Reading Symphony Orchestra. Oh, you yeah. just all the orchestras, you all up in them. Okay, <laughs> man, let's talk about it. <laughs> but I was playing with the Vancouver Symphony Orchestra Orchestra with Nina Simone's daughter. Uh-huh. And um, in fact, I, that's not on my on that that's not on my bio there. But I was with her for five years. Um, Lisa Kelly, uh, Nina Simone's daughter. Mm -hmm. Lisa Simone, she's going by now in uh, in France. That's where she lives now. But I was with her for five years as her bassist and music director, and we played out there in Vancouver, Canada, 
British Columbia with uh, uh, the Vancouver Symphony Orchestra, which is the same symphony orchestra David Foster uses on all his great stuff. And um, man, I'm sitting with my electric bass mm -hmm. and they pull out the charts and I'm looking at these charts and they all the charts are called for upright bass. Mm. And I, but I'm playing it on electric. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no big deal, no big deal. And let me tell you, it was so frustrating because then alongside me was the whole row of basses, mm -hmm. all the bass players, boom, the whole row. Yeah. Man, they hit the first note with that bow. Uh -huh. Man, the room moved. I went, what? Uh -huh. That was it. I came home, called a friend. He always told me if I was looking for a bass, he knew where to find me one. Mm -hmm. I called him up. He, the next few days, he came over, picked me up, took me over, and I went and got me a, an upright bass. And then I just started playing it. And I'll tell you, what, I fell in love with it instantly. It's like learning to play all over again. I, I just like I, I, I got obsessed with it, like I did the electric when I was a kid. Uh -huh. It was like being a kid all over again, man. So, so know. what's the difference between the upright bass and the cello? The, uh, the cello is is, is not is a it's a lot smaller than the upright bass, um, okay. and it's like it's the. See, I don't want to say this wrong because it's the viola and the cello. I always get them mixed up which one mm -hmm. is, is the bigger one. Um, but after those, the viola and the cello, then it's the upright bass, the biggest uh, yeah. violin. Yeah. Of all, you know, so. But, the, but and then, you know what? They, and they, I believe the cello strings are, are, are different, tuned differently than the upright. So, so, so do the notes be in the same place on the upright as an electric guitar, or are they similar? Either similar, yeah, it's in the same place. The difference is on electric guitar, you see the strips going through, your frets going through there. That tells you where your notes are. Mm -hmm. On the upright, you have to do it with your mind and the measurement of your hand. Whoa. So Man. you always, every note you play, it's, it's your mind and the measurement of your hand and your ear. And you have to develop it and develop it until you can, you know, play wow. fluently. That's amazing, that's amazing. I'd never be able to play the upright bass. You, you, you had me hard. at the, you had me at the part where you said the mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Oh, it's hard. I ain't gonna yeah. lie now. It's difficult. That's all right, but I'm that's okay get, because I'm never it wasn't hard. Everybody play it the way I want to. You know, that's the only thing. I'm never. I don't have enough time left on earth to play it the way I want to. Mm. You know. Yeah. Tina Madsen just checked in, and Carmen Green. Yes, you did miss some of it, Carmen, but you know. After this is over, just go on my page and just tap right back in. Yeah, this is another big one, Carmen. This, this is real special. Don't let the smooth chase fool you. This man, <laughs> this man, this, this man play. This man done played with everybody but me. <laughs> uh, We're working on that. <laughs> no, Lord have mercy. You come up and sing with us, right? Uh, not a chance, not a chance. Uh -huh. But anyway, all right, so we got that. Now, which one, if you, which one do you like? The best. Do you have a preference of the upright bass or your bass guitar, electric bass guitar? No, I don't have a preference. I mean, if, if I'm going to swing, yeah, then I have a preference. If I'm going to be swinging, then mm -hmm. I want to play the upright. Yeah, I guess that's like asking which kid you like, and yeah, which one of your children you like the best. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, although, although you only have one, but you you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Carmen, 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 you need to look at the you need to listen to the lineup of who this gentleman has played with. He presently plays, once we get out of COVID, he's been playing with New Life for about what, seven years? Seven years at this point. Yeah, he's been playing the bass years. guitar and he is a gemma, 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 gemma. And who knew? I just thought he was a rattle with a guy that was like really advertising sunglasses because he's always got these nice glasses on. <laughs> Little did I know beneath them glasses was a bassist extraordinaire. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, now, let me see, let me see. All right, all right, we already asked you about the other instruments. Tell us a little bit about Boom Camp Publishing. Oh, uh, that's, Boom Camp started in 96, I believe it was, and uh, just started in my basement studio at the time, which was uh, just nothing but a keyboard and a, and a tape recorder, basically, in my bass. And um, started with a friend of mine, and we started producing young artists, and um, and that really kind of launched me into producing. Period. And and uh, but but my publishing 
company really was was formed because I had to have a publishing company because I, I was releasing records with Pieces of a Dream and, and other people. Mm-hmm. So that did, somebody had to you have to have your publishing together to collect your money. Right. So so Boom Camp Publishing was was really started on that premise, but. Boom Camp uh, Publishing is also Boom Camp Records. Um, when they used to have records, we anyway we used to call it records. It still is, and um, it's more or less now my recording studio, which I'm sitting in right now. But mm-hmm. uh, you know, and I still, you know, do a lot of production and stuff like that. Yeah, because I was all in your studio earlier today, man. I've been trolling you, man. I've been checking oh, you out. <laughs> That's I'm good, hey. I'm Googling and oh, man. Hey. I'm telling you. That's, I, you I, that's I, a journalist right there, man. You're a journalist. You, hey, you man, I take what I do real serious, man. You know, you know, God has blessed me with some dynamite people. I think I've done, I've had some dynamite people. Everybody been on here except one person. Uh, was uh, It wasn't very uh, professional, but everybody else has really, really been a blessing to the community, man, because they've shared their knowledge, inspiration, information, and education. And that's what my show is about. That's what it's always about. And right now, you are inspiring and you're providing us with just so much stuff. Now, are there any actual countries that you've been to? Well, we already talked about acts. Mm -hmm. But is there any country that you prefer you preferred over any other country that you went and played Uh in? Been, there's quite a few countries that I absolutely love, but there's, I don't think there's any place on earth like Japan. Okay. I don't think there's any place on earth like Japan. Now, Japan is extraordinary. The people are extraordinary. The culture is extraordinary. The, the progressive minded people and country it is, it's it just really, it, it's eye opening. I, I tell everybody, if you get a chance to go to Japan, go to Japan and just see it. Just be, just watch it. And it's just amazing. Well, let me ask you while you're, while you're in Japan, did you detect any outright racism while you were there no. or how did they treat you as a person no, of color? No, uh, I'm, you know, I don't, I believe anywhere you go, you're going to, there's going to be some racism somewhere, but no, I never had a, any racist issues. And I, I traveled to Japan for 28 years. Mm. And, and I've never had one racist issue in Japan. Um, matter of fact, <laughs> Drew Love and I. <laughs> uh oh, come on. Spill the beans, spill the beans. <laughs> the closest thing to maybe some racial going on is we were in uh, Fukuoka, Japan, and um, we were we late. We were late. We were going back to our favorite club from coming from some other club uh, after the show. And it's late, it's like morning, I mean, it's like five in the morning, the sun's up. And uh, all of a sudden out of the, 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 you had to go upstairs, so you had to wait downstairs for the elevator. All of a sudden the elevator door opens up while we're downstairs waiting for it. And this crew comes out of it fighting. And some of them had red scars on, some had blue. Here they were bloods and crips, Japanese no. style. Yeah. In, J- in Japan. What y'all? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, and Drew had a, Rag on his head like he always <laughs> and they uh, thought he, you know, you look like he oriental anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And they went chasing at him and they came for me. I put my hands up, I said, come on. <laughs> and he said, your boys started running to him and he stopped me. He went, okay, I'm oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, <laughs> and oh. he, that's, you know, they come a cab around the corner, it was Drew in the cab said, get in. <laughs> oh man, Yo, that was like rush hour or something. Oh my Yo, God. Good movie. <laughs> but that was some funny. That was that was that was the closest thing. But the funny thing was about it, they was emulating what they thought black gangs was the Bloods in the Crypt. Yeah, yeah. That's what they was doing. Wow. Was, mm. But it was like when I said when he confronted me, it was like, oh no, no, I ain't going down. <laughs> <laughs> I know he because you know I'm I'm six two, so yeah. In Japan, yeah. I'm you know <laughs> I'm a big big man. That boy right, so up and all up. <laughs> hey, you, you got people, you got people laughing on that story too, man. <laughs> Donald, it is funny. I'm telling you, Levi, he's special. Now uh, check this out. Is there any goals or missions that you haven't obtained yet that, that you're trying or you would like to obtain? Uh, on your bucket list or something. And, yeah, I'd like to get a Grammy. <laughs> oh, that's notable. Yeah, I'd like to get a Grammy. I, I always got I'm always 
getting close to, you know, um, I've been in the process a couple of times, but I never mm -hmm. got there yet. I'm just trying to, I'm, that's what I'm, I'm trying to get there. I'm, I, before I go, that's, that's why I want to get it. I just want to do it. And I, it ain't, I just want to do it, you know? I, one of my band members, which, you know, two of, them, shoot, two of my band members have Grammys. I bet y'all didn't know that uh, 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 Jeremy has a Grammy. No, I did. Yes, I Jeremy did. has a Grammy. Jeremy don't tell nobody, but Jeremy has a Grammy. Man, bring that Grammy so we can sell that thing, man. Yeah, man, you gonna talk to him. I and, am, you know, I am. Yeah, Jeremy has a Grammy. Uh, I was hoping for, to be uh, on here tonight. I forgot whose record. Um, oh, who, who was it? Oh, it one of the big time oh, contemporary, talk. young right. contemporary gospel artist. Oh, I can't think of it. But anyway, and then my guitarist in my band, David Cullen, has a Grammy. So I'm the only one. I said, man, I got to get me one of them. <laughs> you hang around with the wrong people. You better I'm hang with them a little bit more. That's what I said. <laughs> All right. Now, this, how did we come about to be blessed with you playing at New Life in Christ? Come on, give us, give uh, us that story right quick. That, that's Drew Love again. Uh -huh. uh, well, you know, they, they said they were, um, they were moving on from, or the other bass player moving out of the, moving out of state or going somewhere. And Drew told, uh, well, he, actually they had come, uh, the, the church had some of the people, just pastor and his wife and and uh, um, uh, and Dennis and, and Ava and all had come up to see my group because Drew was playing on, on my, I think it was my CD release party years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, they came up and saw the group and they liked the group a lot. So then when Drew told them, well, I would be interested in filling the bass spot, uh, Ava gave me a call. Okay. And I uh, said, come on down, let's talk. And so we talked and the truth is, let me tell you this, this is, this is something a lot of people did not know about my thirst for contemporary gospel music. I've always loved it. Mm -hmm. And I've always listened to, to contemporary gospel stations and things like that. And then the streaming it when that started, but because I always loved that music so much. Man, there's not, nothing on earth. There ain't no music on earth that'll move you like that. That's the truth. And there isn't. None. You're right. None. Well, I don't care who you are. If you sit down when 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 we were like when we're at church and we, we got it right, mm -hmm. the choir's right, we're right, and we're doing certain tunes, man, that you know what I mean? You can feel keeps me crying. Oh man, you know that. That's what, <laughs> I tell people, I said, they ain't crying. We didn't do it right. <laughs> man, I mean, messed up sitting in the back, <laughs> snotting and all that. <laughs> you know, dude, there's certain songs that I had to, you know, I had to tell yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Oh man. Man, I mean, those moments, man, those moments at church, I miss so much. I know, man. We oh, got to get them things back because ain't nobody playing with this Zoom church all the time. I know, man. I know, I know. Microsoft <laughs> Teams and all that kind yeah. of stuff. <laughs> man, you raise your hand on the computer. No, I want to be in the pews right. raising my hand, man. That's how I roll. All yeah, right. Well, hopefully we can get, they can clean this mess up quicker so we can get back to, you know, doing what we do. Then let me ask you, uh, but first, all my viewers out there, I want y'all don't forget to hit the share button because we want other people to know what it is that we're doing. And I want you all my viewers to know because most of y'all know how I usually am dressed, t-shirt, hoodie, and stuff like that. I'm wearing a shirt in honor of Benny Sims being on the show. <laughs> I think I'll unbutton it now, the top collar. Okay, <laughs> must be in the front row. Okay, now, all right, you're playing a new life. Now, was my cousins there first, Jeremy and Jay? And then you Yeah, they were there first. They were there first. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's how I met them through through church. Uh, yeah. Drew, when um, Ava hired me, Drew referred me, Ava hired me. Excuse me. And um, and that's when I met uh Jeremy and Jason. I'll never forget. The first time I played there, I didn't know what kind of drummer Jeremy. Well, I heard Jeremy was really good. And um, uh, man, we got on stage. And the first song, Jeremy was ripping them drums up. I just was looking at him like, <laughs> oh, it's going to be like that. Okay. <laughs> but I, 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 told, I said, I, I, so, you know, we were doing two two services a day then. Right. And so we went to lunch out there. I said, I said, so 
that's how y'all get down? <laughs> I said, okay. I said, you I said, you caught me by surprise. I said, but now I know. Okay. Uh, and we came in there and ripped up that second show. I mean a uh, second uh, a sermon. It was crazy. Yeah. All right, okay. Let me see. We're 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 getting we're getting there. We're getting there. Okay. Uh, we already know that we miss Fonz should have your dark glasses represent Benny. <laughs> Colin Jones said, Fonz should have your dark glasses. I don't have mine on. I don't yeah. have mine on. Oh, boy. Uh, look, we have Levi said, man, gonna have to, gonna have to bring the family down to visit New Life. Hey, you may have got us a new customer. I mean, a new... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta stop. People might think I'm really stuff. Oh, man. Let me see. So now, so what is next for Benny Sims. What is next? Yeah, I'll tell you what's next. Um, my recording studio um, expansion and, and uh, production company expansion, that's, that's what's in the immediate foreground right now. Mm -hmm. So um, in the next, by this time next year, things are gonna be probably a lot different for me in that area. Hopefully, uh, a whole big step upwards. So, got a lot of things going on in that. Uh, a lot of irons in the fire here. I need a little luck, but not a lot of luck. Things are think are going to happen. So, oh yeah. yeah, as long as you don't quit. I, 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 I tried to quit already. Yeah, man, you've been around too long, been doing it too long to quit. Man. I can't quit now. What am I going oh, to do for food? <laughs> so. What's happening right now, ladies and gentlemen, we're getting ready to come to the hour. But as always, I like my guests to leave our viewers and myself with some parting comments. Anything that you feel that's on your heart that you want to share, any kind of encouragement for people who may want to pursue not just your field, but a profession, period, because it kind of like all, it, it kind of like. It's similar, you know what I mean. So, yeah. give us give us your best shot. Make us cry before you. Before oh man, you turn no, off. You know what though? We 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 kind of touched on it earlier, and that's the thing is, if it's something you want to do, and you know it's in your heart, you got to go for it. Because let me tell you something. You know what? I'm not a rich man, but I am a rich man mm. because I have lived my life my 60 plus years on this earth, doing what I want to do, being my own boss, pursuing my own path. And, and to me, the, that wealth, it, you can't measure it. And I, for anyone who, who's, who, it's in your heart, you wanna do music, I don't care what it is. And you know you were born to do this, do it. Mm. Like you said earlier, it's funny how when you pursue, pursue something, you love how money will follow it. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know? So, you know, it takes some courage because you know everybody was telling me I was crazy. What do you who do you think you are? Yeah. You know, and you know what? And I maybe I was crazy because I was too crazy to listen to him. <laughs> so hey, yeah, you had good sense. You had the best sense in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> to well, ignore yeah. the fools. You know, and as I, you know, we get here in the twilight of our lives here. I'm sitting here yeah. looking back going, wow. I was a professional musician for my whole life, my whole adult life, just about. So, yeah, I mean, it's a dream, but it's it, it's it's a it's a reachable dream, and, and and that's what it has been for me. And I and and you know, follow your follow your heart, follow your heart. Hey, Jay, when you heard that man, he said like, and you never get too old to pursue a dream no. or a goal, man. Because I know no. me and my partner Jay, we always talk about things that we can do, should do, want to do, and stuff like that, man. And uh, bro, <laughs> I'm trying everything. As a matter of fact, I'm engraving upstairs right now, and I'm on my show right now, and all. I, I stay busy. I'm 71. I know you do. And and I'm, look, man, I'm going out kicking the screen and doing what yeah, I I'm do, man. You. I'm with you. I'm with you. Levi said he's proud of you. He don't even know you, but he's heard your story, and that's what City Town Talk is about. It's about making the world smaller. Thank you, Levi. So we know more about the people yeah. that are passing us like ships in the night, man, to give us encouragement, to let you know that you can do, you can be all that you say that you can be. If you just don't quit, get oh. at it, do what you love, and it's a beautiful world. Hey, look, Benny, it's been a plum-pleasing pleasure. 
the hey, corner man, phrase from Les Brown. Brown. I don't want to steal his phrase. Les Brown, that's what Les Brown say, man. It is an honor. It was just darn going fun because we laughed and giggled and stuff about stuff you were doing and who you've been with, man. And you are truly a blessing. Carmen said from Alice in Wonderland show. Is that plum pleasing pleasure, Carmen? Is that you know that's Les Brown's favorite favorite sign off phrase. I read a couple of his books because I wanted to get money and stuff. But anyway, because <laughs> I was about reading and doing some stuff. That's hey, it. look, everybody out there in Chester County and Coastville, man, I am so glad that y'all tuned in. I am so glad we spent some time with this brother. Y'all know I don't eat before a show, so I'm starving like That's Marvin. That's well, right. I want to tell everybody within the sound of my voice, and Benny's voice, man, I want y'all to have a good night. Man, remember that Coach Bill's rise and God loves you, and so do Brother Fonz. Peace out, everybody. Gotta go. Bam. <laughs> See you soon, Benny. All right. <laughs>